Hey guys, Josh with the Adept Ape channel, and in this video we're going to be discussing something that I get questions on a lot and is of major concern to pretty much everyone that owns a diesel engine, and that question is fuel economy. Now we're not going to say gas mileage here because we're talking about diesel, so we say fuel economy, or we can say fuel mileage, but Fuel is very important for any owner, operator, RV owner, bus driver, anything, because fuel is the single highest cost typically outside of the driver pay for any diesel vehicle. And fuel prices are pretty high now. A lot of the parts of the country, over $3 a gallon, talking in the US. So how do you optimize your fuel economy? And there are things you can do that can cost you money to increase the fuel economy, but there are many things you can do that don't cost really hardly anything and you can help improve your fuel economy. So we're gonna be discussing those things and I'm gonna go kind of starting with the engine because that's usually what I get the questions on the most and then we're gonna talk about generally trucks and what you can do to try to boost your fuel economy, okay? So first thing we'd like to do is let's do a little math and Let's say for an average on highway truck, you're gonna run 80,000 miles a year. And let's say this truck gets five miles to the gallon. That is gonna give you 16,000 gallons of fuel burned in that one year's time. Now, if you multiply that by the price of fuel, which is, we'll have a round number here, $3 a gallon, that's $48,000. That's a lot of money. That's more than a rebuild of the engine. Now, if you could bump that fuel economy not by a bunch, we'll say from five to six miles to the gallon over the same distance, you are looking at much better fuel economy here. So you're only gonna burn 13,333 gallons in that year. So if you multiply that by the same fuel cost, you're saving about $8,000 a year. Now, maybe you're going from four to six, or maybe you're going to five to seven, or five to five and a half it makes a big difference five to five and a half would still give you four thousand dollar a year savings that's a lot of money so how can you improve your fuel economy and the first thing we're going to discuss is the engine which that's where my specialty is especially in cats so the first thing we'd like to talk about is horsepower and how it affects your fuel economy and people will say hey if i drop my horsepower let's say they have a 500 horsepower cat and they say, oh, it's at 500 horsepower. If I drop it to 475, will I save on fuel? Or if I bump it to 550, will I save on fuel? Because it'll be a lower load on the engine opposed to at 80% throttle. Well, not really, at least talking physics here, because if you're moving a certain amount of weight over a certain distance, just increasing or decreasing your horsepower, it still requires the same amount of horsepower or torque to move the wheels at a certain speed. So not necessarily changing your horsepower or your torque curve is going to make it more fuel efficient. Some people claim that it does, some people claim that it doesn't. But most of the guys I know that have bumped their their horsepower or even, even derated it, they, they say their fuel economy typically does not change. Now, so let's say you own an engine. What are the best things to keep the fuel economy at its peak without going aftermarket? Well, doing your basic maintenance. Is the air filter clean? Are the fuel filters clean? Does it have good normal fuel pressure? How's your oil? Uh, you can actually run, if you switch to a, a synthetic oil, and some of those are a lower viscosity. It might be 5 to 40, opposed to 15 to 40. Now, 40 is the viscosity when it is hot so when the engine's super hot it's not really changing the viscosity but synthetic oils typically have more uniform molecule size and if they have a better lubricating properties you might see a very insignificant gain in fuel economy just from running a synthetic oil although there are other benefits of synthetic oils like longer oil life things like that but we're talking about fuel economy here and also if Let's say certain engines, there's a viscosity grade variable, like on a C7, you can actually run 10W30 or 15W40, which would get better fuel economy. The 10W30 actually would. And why is that? Well, a thinner oil is typically you're gonna have lower oil pressure, which people might freak out, oh my gosh, my oil pressure is five PSI lower. 
Well, what that means is your pump is not having to work as hard because the pressure around your bearings and the pressure that it has to build in the pump, which takes horsepower away from the engine, is slightly less because the viscosity is slightly lower. So that's something to keep in mind. There's other things you can check. If you have a big air leak and your air compressor is cycling on and off all the time, the air compressor is a load on the engine. Now, if you fix your air leaks and your air compressor is not cycling on and off all the time, it's not going to increase your fuel economy by two miles to the gallon, but maybe it'll be 0.1 mile to the gallon, which will show a significant increase of your profits over the life of the engine. So these are things to check. You know, are your valve is your valve lash okay? Do you have any sort of black smoke under all operating conditions or under a load? You know, this that indicates black smoke is unburned fuel. So you're wasting fuel. Fuel's expensive. We're trying to save it here. So as far as the stock engine goes, these are things you can check and really look for to make sure that it's running at its optimal level. Level. The other thing is your boost. If your boost is decreased over time, you most likely have a CAC leak or a boot leak. And the lower your boost under the same load, typically the less efficient the engine is. So if your boost is lower than normal, you might want to have that checked out. It could be costing you fuel at the pump, okay? Now, what about aftermarket gadgets? I've seen all sorts of stuff. Stuff that bolts on the fuel system and is supposed to spin the fuel or make the fuel magnetic or all sorts of stuff. And then there's more legitimate products like air dog systems and fast systems that help reduce the aeration of the fuel or the bubbles in the fuel and help get it out of the engine. Now, anything you're going to buy at a truck stop for the most part that bolts on in under five minutes is probably not going to increase your fuel economy. And the reason for this is it's probably a gimmick. Something that spins your fuel just doesn't really make sense in a diesel engine because unlike a automotive engine where you have fuel atomizing in an intake manifold typically or on the newer ones where it atomizes in the cylinder directly I could almost see if it's going into an intake manifold and it's swirling you might see some sort of improvement on certain engines but on a diesel it just doesn't make any sense because the fuel is going into an injector and the injector is putting it under high pressure and then just spraying it in. I don't see you know, spinning it or making it magnetic or whatever the gimmick thing does could add fuel economy. They usually claim higher horsepower and better fuel economy. I don't see how you can typically get both of those from the same product at the same time in under five minutes. Now, most aftermarket manufacturers, of course, are going to claim that they do these items, but I haven't seen anything real world that will really prove that they do. Now, I mentioned air dog and fast systems. So these systems do work. They will take your fuel and cycle a small percentage of it back to the tank. And the reason it does that is it's collecting any air bubbles in the system and sending them back to the tank before they reach the injectors. Now, will this increase your fuel economy? Not necessarily. What this usually does is it's fixing a system that is sucking air bubbles. Now, most manufacturers allow a certain amount of aeration of the fuel into the injectors. And while it's not optimal, you really don't want any air in the, in the fuel. These systems get rid of all the air, pretty much. Probably 99% of it. Now, maybe if you have a system that's sucking a lot of air and these systems help clean that up, you could possibly save better Injector life, possibly better fuel economy. Those are things to think about if your system is really old and you think you're sucking a lot of air. Of course, the thing is, if you're sucking a lot of air, you probably have a line that is cracked or a fitting that's cracked or loose or old, and it probably needs replaced. So we've been discussing the engine quite a bit here, but let's talk about the truck in general and things you can do that are free and things you can do that might need already replaced on your truck that could potentially help save you some fuel money, okay? So the biggest thing, and this is something that for the most part you can do for free, is vary your speeds. And by vary, I mean drop your speeds. Now, am I talking about engine speed or am I talking about vehicle speed? Well, the biggest one actually is vehicle speed. Now, most on-highway trucks are 
on the highway. So they're traveling, at least in the West, at very high rates of speed. You know, some guys are going 75, maybe 80 miles an hour. A lot of the parts of the country, this is totally legal, depending on where you're at, except for the 80. And, you know, if, if you could drop that speed, it really helps contribute to better fuel economy. Now, why is that? The reason is, as your truck increases in speed, particularly about over 50 miles per hour, and I'll show you a graph here, after about 50, 55, depending on the aerodynamics of your vehicle, your fuel economy really starts to drastically tank. So if you could drop from 75 to let's say 55 miles per hour, you're probably gonna see about a 20% increase in fuel economy, depending on the aerodynamics. If you're very inefficient as far as aerodynamics go, you're gonna see a better fuel economy return when you drop your speed. Now, why is this? It's because the drag on the vehicle while cutting through the air is not one to one. So it's not like when you're going 75, you know, it's only a slight increase over 55. You're moving a much higher volume of air as you increase in speed. So going from 75 to 80, you're gonna see even worse fuel economy. So first thing I tell people is, Drop your speed, that's the biggest thing. So maybe if you're always running 75, go to 70. See what it does, maybe you'll, maybe you'll pick up a mile per gallon or half a mile per gallon. Now of course, your earnings over hours would decrease because you're pushing less miles, but to some people, they're more concerned with their fuel costs than they are for the speed at which they get places. So that's something to keep in mind. I knew a guy, he had a huge Peterbilt. It had a uh, Regen Acert Cat in it, which are not known for the best fuel economy. They usually get about five and a half miles per gallon. And this guy was getting over seven. And I said, what's the deal? Like, why are you getting such good mileage? And this had a, a huge sleeper on it. He ran fairly heavy. And he said, well, I just, I drop my speed all the time. I'll, I'll drop it by a mile per hour. I've been doing that about every couple months. And I'm at, I run at 62 miles an hour pretty much everywhere. And he was getting over seven miles to the gallon. That's a huge savings. If you're a mile and a half difference between five and a half to seven, that's gonna save you a lot of money every year. It's also less wear and tear on the engine because it's a lighter load on the engine. Now, you may have heard that, you know, reduce your speed and aerodynamics might matter, but maybe you're thinking like, yeah, it probably doesn't matter that much. Well, I have kind of an unrelated question for you here. What is the fastest bicycle ever? Well, it's a recumbent velomobile. What is a recumbent velomobile? Here's a picture of one. This bicycle, which they run tests in Nevada for uh, they have bike races, basically, to see who can make the fastest bicycle. This is not an electric bike or gas powered or anything. It's just there's a person inside pedaling this thing, and it's over a several-mile stint, and they take speed samples. And this went 83 miles per hour over a set distance. That's pretty fast for a bicycle. And the reason it went so fast is not because it had the most powerful human cyclist inside. The reason it did is because it's super aerodynamic so it's not that the person inside's more powerful it's just the power that that person put out is much more efficient because of the aerodynamics of the bicycle and as you increase in speed the aerodynamics matter more and more and more that's why this bike's so fast it's because the aerodynamics and that's why i say drop your speed because it's really hard to make your truck more aerodynamic there are things you can do though there are wheel covers you know if you have huge spikes sticking out of your lug nuts those probably aren't the best for cutting through the air you know there's a lot of things you can do you can a lot of the trailers now have those little side skirts that's to help the air not hit the rear wheels also the 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 fairings on the rears of the trailers that's to help the air escape the airstream on the back of the trailer and not cause as much turbulence these things can cause significant fuel economy differences, especially in large fleets where you're talking hundreds or thousands of trucks. So that's something to keep in mind is the aerodynamics of the vehicle. You know, take off, if you have a bunch of accessory lights or things that stick out, try to move them. Let's say if they stick out past the bumper, try to move them into the bumper. Anything that's gonna catch the air is costing you money at the pump. Now we talked about vehicle speeds a lot already. How about engine speed and your gearing? How does this affect fuel economy? 
Well, to understand the engine, you need to understand where it operates at most efficiently. And typically on any internal combustion engine, whether it's gas or diesel, you're gonna have a full torque area and a full load area. And the full load's where it makes max horsepower and the full torque's where it makes max torque, which is, of course, just turning power. And horsepower is turning power multiplied by the engine RPM. So where is the engine most efficient? Is it at max horsepower or max torque? It's at max torque. And where do engines make max torque? At the higher range of the RPM or the lower range? They make it at the lower range on pretty much all big, especially CAT, C15, C13s, they make max torque around 1,200 RPM. Now they make max horsepower at around 1,800 RPM. And it seems like most guys run around 14 to 1,500 RPM. You might want to experiment, though, with lowering your RPMs if you're just pulling a flat. Now, if you're pulling a hill, you're going to need the additional horsepower, so you're going to need to increase your RPMs typically or drop your speed but your engine is most efficient around 1200 RPM, depending on the size of the engine. If you're running a smaller seven liter engine, you're gonna need to increase those RPMs. The max torque might be around 15 to 1800 at this point. And the reason for this is because since the engine speed is lower, the valves are actually open slightly longer because everything's moving slightly slower in the engine. So the valve opening the valve closing slightly longer time so that allows it to make more torque at this speed now also your oil pressure is going to be slightly less due to the speed decrease as well so you could see possibly better fuel economy if you run it more towards the lower end of the rpm spectrum now some guys will be concerned that oh well, if the oil pressure is lower there you know, maybe I'm gonna spin a bearing or something. Well, no, you have full oil pressure at this range. Now you don't wanna lug your engine. You do wanna keep it above that full torque because anything below that, your horsepower is significantly decreased. And the horsepower at 1200 RPM is fairly low as well compared to at 1800. So load dependent, maybe start working on keeping your gearing a little higher and, you know, take a fuel log and see Maybe you'll pick up a little bit of mileage just by varying the RPM. You know, maybe run it a gear higher and see what happens, okay? Now, what about fuel additives, oil additives, coolant additives? Can any of these affect the operation of your engine? Well, your fluids are very important, and there are additives that can really help your, your fluid life and your engine life. If, you know, if you have an issue with, let's say, mold growing in your fuel, you know, there are additives that will help treat that there's things that help your coolant last longer there are different additives for oil although in the for the most part not a huge fan of a lot of these they usually just make it thicker or add some mystery item to the oil that's supposed to make it last longer or something for the most part i'm not aware of any that really add a lot of fuel economy because really the oil in there it does a lot of jobs, and if you change one part of the job it's doing, it might affect one of the other parts of the job. You know, your, your oil is cooling, lubricating, and you don't want to start messing around with a bunch of additives. I, I've pulled million-mile engines apart that just run oil, and sometimes the bearings look brand new. You know, you don't have to run a bunch of additives in your oil. Like I said, about the fuel, you know, especially if the truck sits a lot or something, you might want to add an additive just to help it stabilize it. But I'm not aware of anything that you can just pour in that's really going to help your fuel economy. And remember, if a vendor is selling something that says it does, they're in the job to sell that product. They're not necessarily in the job to, you know, make you a lot of money for the most part. Not saying there isn't something out there that might actually work, but I'm not aware of any, okay? Now, we touched on cooling a little bit just talking about additives, but your coolant temperature matters quite a bit as well. Now, what do I mean by this? You do not want to run low coolant temperatures. You don't want to pull your thermostats out. You do not want to run colder thermostats. Your engine is most efficient when it's hot. Now, I don't mean overheating. I don't mean 240 degrees. I mean, if it's running at 205, it's going to be more efficient than it is at 190. And the reason for this is you have more cylinder pressures when it's that hot due to the 
piston to cylinder bore area expanding and being a tighter fit. If you've ever tried to rotate an engine by hand that's hot, it's much harder to rotate. Also, as the engine gets hotter, your viscosity of the oil tends to decrease slightly. So we already mentioned this. It will reduce your oil pressure slightly, and this puts a lighter load on the engine. Okay? Things to keep in mind. So let's go into a few quick questions that people have asked me over the years and how they affect fuel economy. So one question I've got more than once is, do jakes affect your fuel economy? No, they don't. When do jakes work? They work when your foot is off the throttle. You have no reason to be applying throttle and have your jakes trying to slow down the engine. So you're basically at a zero fuel burn rate when your jakes are on because foot's off the throttle, jakes are on, your injectors aren't even firing for the most part. It's just your cylinder is pushing air up and then the jakes are opening, releasing the air. It's not burning excess fuel. So use your jakes all you want. Doesn't affect fuel economy. Another question I get, the regen engines, if you bypass all your regen stuff, your art head or whatever, your seventh injector, or you program it so it never regens and you take out your DPF, will that affect fuel economy? Yes, it will. It will make your fuel economy better. Now, this is illegal. It's against EPA rules, and as a cat dealer, I can't do any sort of this stuff, but your regen system is pouring fuel into the exhaust to help burn the soot and clean it out of the DPF. Does this waste the fuel? Well, it's burning it just to reduce emissions. It doesn't help you move a load from point A to point B. So by bypassing that system, it does reduce your fuel consumption overall. But as I said, you know, if that's something you're going to do, which a lot of guys do, just remember if you get caught, there are some pretty big fines for that. A couple other questions. Does decreasing the idle RPM save fuel? Yes, it does. Although you should not be idling your engine for very long extended periods of time. And if you are, most manu manufacturers recommend that you increase the engine RPM slightly to increase cylinder pressures. But the higher the engine RPMs are turning just sitting still, the more fuel it's going to take to burn. So if for some reason your idle RPM is at 800, maybe drop it to 700, but you shouldn't be idling it for super long amounts of time anyways. But a lot of guys do, and especially if you're just sitting in it overnight or something, you know, you might burn a couple gallons less over a couple day period if you drop those RPMs slightly. That's one thing to think about. And for the final question, does your cooling fan affect your fuel economy? Yes, it does. The cooling fan actually is a very heavy load on the engine. And these fans typically turn at very high RPMs, and they take a large amount of power from the engine to turn. Also, if it's on all the time, that is cooling the engine off, and it can overcool the engine. So if your engine's not running hot, don't have your fan on. Now, if the AC's on, fan's most likely going to be on or cycling on. But you shouldn't be running your AC all the time either, unless, of course, it's hot and it's summer. So if it's hot, turn your AC on. But your AC is also a slight load. And like I said before, if the coolant is colder and your engine temp is colder, it's usually less efficient as well. So keep your fans off unless the engine's hot, okay? Something to think about there. Now it's time for a little segment I like to call... So we got some destruction here from a 3500 series cat, which you can see has very big pistons. And you can see the piston here is totally destroyed. We have the liner. This is the liner that the piston was in. And that line you're looking at, it's a crack. The uh, crack goes about three quarters of the way around the liner here. Just totally broken. Uh, very expensive parts, obviously. And uh, this is the wrist pin bushing. Totally destroyed as well. Uh, luckily, this had removable liners, but this engine had some heavy damage. Hope you enjoy the video.